Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's episode 90. It's also the degrees it is in this room. Yeah. Joining me this week is the wonderful and incredible Ian Gibson. Hi, I'm here. I'm tired. Can we end this in about, what do we think, 10, 15 minutes? 10, 15 minutes is the nickname I just gave Jake Terrio. Uh-oh. That sounds like it could be good or bad. I'm playing Islanders for a bit. <laughs> Wow. This is a good bit. Speaking of islands, I'm playing Lego Island. Ooh. Wow. Folks at home can't see that. Um, That was great. That Lego was great. Island 3. Oh my gosh, that is extreme. Pokemon Black and White Guide. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> Mechanical Pencil. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just do this the whole show. New box of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> Uh, light bulb. <laughs> Shit, you win. <laughs> this bit sucks. Can't talk. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, audio listeners. Um, folks, uh, we are here to talk about video games and all things video games, and probably all things not video games. Ian, you had a bit prepared. Did you want to? Did we want to do that? Did that want to happen? I got a. Uh... You know, this is very relevant, honestly, and I do have a question for you, Will. I got a, a message from my father, uh, uh -oh. and he said, please call me when you get a chance. I have a tech question, uh, which honestly I'm fine with because my dad, I mean, he has a, a master's in computer science. He's pretty techy, so it's not like, how do I turn the computer on? <laughs> it's usually like, hey, what do you know about cloud platforms? You know, stuff like that. Um and he said, like, hey, so if an 85-year-old man wanted to play Doom, what's the best way to do that? And I was like, are you talking about Grandpa? And he's like, yeah, I'm talking about Grandpa. So so my 85-year-old Grandpa, my dad's been uh, getting him a new PC. He used to be really into computers, and he kind of fell away from it, but he still uses the computer. But he loved playing Doom. Mm -hmm. And so my dad got the new computer and apparently my grandpa dug out his old copy of Doom. I'm assuming on floppy. Actually, no, he had it on CD and he and he was like, how do I play this on it? <laughs> <laughs> and so my dad, like he tried to install it and it didn't work because it was like, I think it, it was up to Windows ME and, mm -hmm. you know, he's running like 10 or 11 now. And so then my dad was like, so then I was like, well, Doom's probably on Steam. So I just bought him Doom on Steam and gifted it to him and set him up with that. But it's different now. And I was like, what Doom did you buy? And he goes, I bought Doom. And I said, what Doom did you buy? And he goes, I bought, I think it came out in 2016. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, no. Very different. Uh, and, and, I, and, and he's like, I tried to get him to play it, but he wasn't really. And I was like, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't do mouse and keyboard at the same time yeah. very well. I've um, and he was like, yeah, and he, he, as soon as he saw the graphics, he was like, this is too much for me. <laughs> so he, so he got him, he found doom in a browser and he was going to try and show him that. But then he was also like, how do I, what's the best way to do this? And I said, Z, look up Z doom. And I was like, I think the best way to do it is probably Z doom. And then just get all the settings right his, for, for his computer. And then either have a shortcut or a PowerShell script shortcut that he can just double click on the desktop and it automatically boots into Z Doom. Does that sound about right? I, I know you play a bunch of Doom. Yeah, so I was going to say, he doesn't even need to buy the game. He can yeah. just download GZ Doom and pull the wad off the CD. Like, it's on yeah. there. Um, exactly. And then if he wants Doom 2, pull that off as well. If he has a Doom 2 disc. But yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I would have said. Um, yeah. And yeah, if they don't want to hassle with that, they're like super cheap on GOG. Um, yeah, and there are those original versions. Are so we, the other thing is this the was gra sharing grandpa facts portion of the, or should I ho hold on to my grandpa fact until? Yeah, I hold on to your grandpa fact because I do okay. have one other question, uh, which folks, is hold on to your grandpa <laughs> facts. <laughs> he has a collection of like Windows ninety five, ninety eight games, like you know, like Police Training Academy two, like stuff like that, um, and. You know, my dad was like, "Well, what are those other games going to work if he asked me?" And I was like probably not and you're not going to find like a like a z doom equivalent and and the other thing he wanted was like castle uh castle wolfenstein wolfenstein 3d basically mm -hmm. um and i was like the other option is if you just set up a vm for him and so he clicks into it and launches when it's 95 or 98 and then all the stuff he can he wants to install in there what what 
Do you think that's a viable option? Because the idea is at the end of the day, it needs to be like something he can double click and it opens up and then he can select which game he wants to play. I know you've been doing that for all the stupid old games that you play. Do you think that's a viable <laughs> option? Is that easy to set up? Yeah, so he can do um, like the virtual box stuff. You can make a shortcut yeah. so it auto opens that. I have, I can probably find the source or just send it to you like a someone built a whole windows i think 98 computer and then you can just pull that down and it'll boot up to that so you don't have to do all the settings yourself um there's also recently brad shoemaker of nextlander talked about 86 box which yes, is yeah. along those lines but it is very much you put in the pc parts into that program yeah. to run the computer and it's <clears throat> I think it's more i don't think it's fpga based but it's more hardware based so it'll like really eat up your cpu versus virtual box i don't think does as much <laughs> um but yeah uh, other than like buying an old computer that he can just use um no because because they do use it for email and stuff so yeah. it's one of those where they they need the new computer but he wants to play the the old games as simply as possible yeah so if you could send me the link to that that virtual box stuff because i think that may be the best way and the good news is he's not setting it up my dad is setting it up all for him yeah we just need to get it so it's like double click this and there you go you know yeah that should work um because i think you can make the virtual box like its own environment and then to get yeah. out of it it's just like you shut down the computer or you can like, control alt out of it or something I forget yeah what gotcha jake yeah, that's uh, what video what video games does your grandpa play Oh, he's well. So here's the fact. The fact is that he's he's 96. He does not play okay. video games. The fun fact was that the Queen was p apparently born two days before my grandfather. So he has uh, outlived the most recent leg of the British monarchy. Damn! Wow! Wow! But um, he's no, king he, now, right? He, yes. So now he's the king. He has a cell phone, but it only has the ESPN app so that he can check <laughs> scores. Oh, but it's a smartphone, though. Yes, and it's Bluetoothed to his hearing aids so that if somebody calls him, that's oh. awesome. See, he hears that. see, that's that's very fancy. I know you're trying to downplay it because I had to get both my grandparents onto brand new flip phones earlier this year because their old flip phones were impacted by the 3g shutdown so i had mm. to get them onto literally oh. the only 4g lte flip phones that are still being made brand new <laughs> do you think uh there our generation there'll be like old hipsters who use the hearing aids from like the 60s that are like the little box you you oh, I'd, I'd use those today. Well, yeah, those on, on that sweet. on that note, Will, when I was in jazz ensemble in college, we would go around to like senior living facilities and we'd play, <laughs> you know, old jazz standards and stuff. And my roommate and I, he was the bass player and I was the guitar player. And we were chatting oh, no. like when we're in old retirement homes, what are the bands going to come in and play? <laughs> Is it, are they going to be playing like like Justin <laughs> Bieber? <laughs> Sorry, or I thought they, you were going to go so. with I thought you were going to go with the old folks would plug their hearing aids into like the mixer. The amps. <laughs> oh no, that would be that would be pretty cool. That would be awesome. But, um, no, they did not. I was going to say I don't think either of my grandfathers knew what video games were. Um Wow, that's a very sad way to say that ever. both dead will. <laughs> I mean they wow. both did, but they both died early, so I don't think I like I like video games existed when one of them was around so i think he would have encountered him but he was also like a boat guy and ran a boat yeah. yard so i don't think he ever and my dad didn't really play video games my uncle read comics a little bit i don't think he ever really would have encountered him so video I know... games killed will's grandpas yeah, yeah. So i know my grandpa graveyard keeper knew what video games were but he's been fairly technology phobic for a long time like when he worked at rockwell in the 60s and they started like in the 70s they started getting computers in he was high enough up the chain of command to be like i don't want a computer give them to everybody <laughs> below me i'm not gonna use one wow and that's give me been... a yellow legal pad yeah slide rule and a yellow legal pad <laughs> and he was a programmer <laughs> mm. <laughs> um Jesus. thank you everyone for sharing your grandfather stories and reminding me that mine are all gone um moving on folks we i always have the grandfather in stardew valley 
that is at least a comfort to me. Isn't he dead? And Tortimer. <laughs> he is dead. I just realized that too. <laughs> Can't even Tortimer is alive. Fake so grandfather. Uh, I was trying to think grandfathers in video games. It's Stardew Valley one who's dead. Tortimer, I guess. That's it. That's the list. Who's Kratos' dad? Probably dead. Zeus or something. Jupiter. Mm. Um, okay, let's get into what we've been playing this week. I'll go quick because it's... Actually, I won't go quick because Fallout New Vegas isn't on here. Pokemon White, I'm still playing. Fallout New Vegas, I am still playing. Uh, I picked up, thanks to last week, uh, we had a lot of Fire Emblem chat on the, on the local chat last week. We did Two. have an episode... Two weeks ago, I wasn't on. <laughs> Despite you not being there, we didn't have one we, last We week, actually yeah. had an emergency episode. Oh, um, we talked about this before. You guys still have the episode, but you don't publish it out of respect for me not being there. That's exactly. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So it's you guys just living on a server somewhere. I, I let yeah, Save Data but, publish it just so they like get a little one up for them. We need to talk about this afterwards, though. <laughs> um, we still haven't hired an HR person. <laughs> What? That's gonna change shortly. You shut mm. the fuck up, Jake. Um, <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, oh. Call your grandpa. Um, Jason said by the time he came on the podcast again, uh, I should have played Fire Emblem: The Sacred Stones, which is Fire Emblem Eight with the Game Boy Advance. So I have picked that up, and it is really good. Um, I'm having an absolute blast with it. Um, my one. I'll say my one issue with it before I go into it more is the like saving is either you save mid battle and resume or you save at the beginning of the chapter and then restart the chapter every time you reboot the game. But chapters are usually only one battle. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's Fire Emblem. Yeah. Uh, it's my first Fire Emblem. Did you say you can um, save mid battle? Yeah, you can save and resume mid battle, which is nice. Um, I, the, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm trying hard not to be an asshole, but your complaint about the save system is that you can save mid battle and outside of battle. No, I was going to get to my point. You keep stopping me. No, my point is I was annoyed that I had to wait through all of the story cutscenes every single time and just button through them, which still takes a little bit, but you can hit the start button. It goes right through it. It's incredible. Oh, okay, so no complaint then. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. so no real complaint. Um, and also the chapters are short enough that you, like, if, uh, sorry, my other point to that was if if you're outside of battle and you're, like, walking around doing stuff, you just have to restart the chapter after that. Yeah, Anyways. Yeah. Um, so I'm really enjoying that. I've been playing on the Pocket, and then I've been using the Pocket Dock and playing on my 4K TV, and that is a sight to behold. Um... Because it's just like you you turn this game you've always seen tiny into this giant video game that is on your screen. Um, and it's very fun and cool and it looks great. And you can still do all the different display options on your TV. So I can make it look like a Game Boy Advance screen on my TV. Nice. Which is really interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying it. I, I'm trying to, I'm really trying to like follow the story, read all, what all the characters are doing, keep track of things, and it's going well. And, and the story, I was expecting it to not be interesting, because it like starts off and like, this is this nation, this is this nation, this nation likes this. And I was like, oh, how the fuck am I going to follow this? But then it like, it, it has a pretty good storyline, and you can follow through with the characters, even though there's 500,000 of them. Are um, any of the Smash characters in it? Roy and Marth and... Roy and Marth are not. I, I don't know if Ted. any of these characters end up in Smash. Um, I don't think Ike. Ike is um, who I'm thinking of. There's like, um, uh, yeah, there's all those other people. I don't, I don't think they're in it. I think they're from the ones that already had 3D characters, which are the like GameCube mm. ones um, and the DS, whatever they are. Olimar. Um, Olimar, yeah, was a Fire Emblem character. Uh, so that's super fun. Uh, I can't wait to tell Jason more about it. I actually, I just, I was playing it for like four hours straight and just texted him a picture. So I was like, I can't stop playing this. Uh, and then the other game I can't stop playing is Idle One. It is an idle game. Is this an idle game? Is this an idle game? I'm gonna look it up right now. Can I start it? Can I start playing? 
my god, I love it. I've been thinking about an idol game recently, and I just space plan. So it's play oh space plan. God. Sorry, okay, it's a really good idol game. It, and it was also... okay. Space plan was okay. It just it didn't scratch enough the idol itch, but it was pretty good. Tell you what I like about it. You so the thing well. I like about the thing I like about this idol game is when you're not playing it, it's not doing anything. And at first, that sounds counterintuitive to an idle game. And I get what you're saying. But, so, the basic premise of it is, I don't even know what the basic premise is. You get these things that you can upgrade, they earn money, and you're working towards this ultimate goal. And then you can reset your runs to give increases to things. But this game really truncates it, where... You're just going to your max, and when you notice you're, like, not getting a lot more money, you just reset and get back to that point. And so, like, the goal of this game is more the resetting of it rather than the idle part of it, which is, like, upgrading things. Because at this point, I, like, fly through the upgrades all the way to the top, and then, like, the next upgrade is so far away that I, I, I don't have a chance to just wait around for it to upgrade. So I just restart add those bonus points back in multipliers and then go from there. I'll, I'll show it to the screen so you guys can see it's, it. It's on, it's so on like, phone? Yeah, it's, it's on mobile. Um, so you work from the bottom on the way up. Uh, this is where you reset. And then when you reset, it tells you what color you got and what category you upgraded. And then you just tap to upgrade. Um, the stuff that upgrades is the speed of the line connecting with the thing, all this sort of stuff. Wait, wait it, so it, sorry. What, the thing I'm not understanding is what's the theme? So, for example, like the chicken game, it was like you're you're hatching chickens. You know, ultimate paperclip, it was like stock market stuff. What's what's the idle theme here? The idle theme here is you are trying to uh, work a machine that is researching the meaning of life. And so you okay. are upgrading to tiers and tiers to earn, I, bel I believe it's money. You're earning more money to dump into your research to you're learn the meaning of life. NFTs. Um, and you're adding new layers to it. And I, I didn't read like the fucking descriptor text and there's nothing in the game. Um, but I mean, really, I thought it was neat that the, none of the idle stuff happens when you're idle. Like if you stop playing the game and come back, it's like, hey, your next restart will have a four times multiplier. Uh, or I'll have a two times multiplier, something like that. So your goal in this game isn't the idle stuff. It's getting to the point where you can reset every run to add more points. There's three points category for each color. So there's oh, earning, it's got prestige. cost. So yeah, the, the goal of this game is yeah. more the, pre you're playing the prestige rather than playing, thank you, that's the word, rather than playing the idle part. And I kind of like that because I can play it in bursts while stuff's happening, shut it down, come back, and then I'd like have a nice little boost yeah uh, for it so yeah prestige is is has is been the the popular new mechanic in idle games recently and when they do it well they do it really well yeah you're you're much more the more knowledgeable person so if you do happen to play it let me know like if that's a newer thing or like the way they do it because I, I would genuinely like to know because i feel like the last idle game i played was uh that crazy taxi one and i had to delete it off my phone because i was playing oh, too, too much. i played that a, i played that a crazy little bit yeah. taxi idol game it was yeah, so good it was, it was okay it was so good because i was hooked on it and then i said i can't yeah, do yeah. this and i just deleted it <laughs> oh, honestly I, I that's can't believe I that, that's the weird thing about idol games is you can't judge them by how much you play them or how much you want to play them because it's very easy to hit that threshold with an idle game. So it's like, it's like this game sucks, but I've played it like 20 hours in the last week, you know? Yeah. It's how and much like you're say, thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How much, how much, how much you get back out of it? Because mm -hmm. idle games is all about, I'm going to put a shitload into it because I get a little endorphin mean, you know, but give me, give me something back. Right. Give, give me a lot. It's back. like gambling. 90% of gamblers stop right before they hit it big. Um, so I never stop. Never stop, <laughs> folks. Um, so uh, I think that's everything uh, I have been playing this week, which means it's time for special guest Jake to tell us all about the games he's been playing, like the first one that is blank. Well, no, I'm going to do the last two because nope, Islanders first. and Destiny 2. Uh, that's all I need to say about those. I'm still playing them. I love um, So I did on um, last week, 
or this week, I bought Tacoma from uh, Fulbright, did Gone Home, and something else after Tacoma, whose name escapes me. Um, uh, open, yeah. open Roads, all Open Roads, something Open Roads. I think um, they did Workplace Harassment. I think is their latest. <laughs> I yes, that was the most recent uh, thing to come out of that studio. Um, but Tacoma was good in a vacuum, which is a pun about it being on a space station. So it's all worth it then. Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. That's what the gamers want. Um, but no, it was a nice bit of sci-fi. Um, you know walking simulator as some might say walking around a space station finding like recordings of what what happened here and i loved it um yeah it's very good it was just a nice bit of and also like a like a very lived in thought out world like the very first thing i remember is you know you get out of your chair when you're shuttle docks and you turn around and the first thing you see is like a piece of plywood up against the wall that has spray painted on it, like important AI parts behind here. Do not touch. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, some cheap <laughs> spaceship just thrown together with wood and duct tape. Um, but yeah, very good. Um, I was, I don't want to mention the ending in case people want to play it for themselves, but I was, I was, I thought it was going to go one way and then it went another and I was happy with the direction that it went. And I was nice. trying to look it up quick because I can't remember how it ended. Because mm. um, I think I'm confusing it with another game that came out after it where you're on a space station. And so I have to make sure Ray. I know what the actual ending is. Oh, I remember Ray what the is ending good. is. Yeah. I remember what the ending is. It is a good ending. Um, yeah. But yeah, it had a lot of, you know, it was, I, I didn't realize it was made like four or five years ago. It was 2017 yeah. or... Um, Because it felt very prescient in kind of the the commentary and the subtext of the narrative um, about kind of, you know, corporatization and and like workers' rights and all that kind of classic sci-fi kind of stuff. Um, But I played it. It was good. That's all I have to say about it. Then on Game Pass, I found a game called Loot River which uh, I picked because the screenshots called out to me and it looked like something that might scratch the Hyperlight Drifter itch that's been festering in the back of my brain. Um, it's by... I can't remember the studio name, but it's I'm assuming somewhere in uh, Eastern Europe because uh, there's a card at the beginning that's like from the Slavic Arts Fund. Like it received money from the government to be made, which is great. I have always resented that since we went to Iceland for the documentary and everybody there was like, Oh yeah, we're chatting with such and such, you know, in our government body next week to try to get money for our game. And I'm like, yeah, America doesn't do that. (laughs) They care about arts funding at all. Um, But this seems to be a game that had some sort of government arts funding. It's like a top downy sort of isometric hack and slash. Um, but on all these moving like Tetris block platforms that you can move independent of your character moving. So like you can be moving the level as your character is moving on a block to try to do like strategic gotcha. kind of combaty things. Um, but also a little bit of like puzzling in navigating through the levels where you're like, well, this block doesn't fit through there. I got to move this and that so that I can get, through to the next part um it's neat and it's on game pass if anybody wants to try it um i did play like two levels on the normal mode right at the beginning it had a card that came up that's like hey we know this game's kind of hard we put in an easy mode that you can switch to (laughs) at any point and i was like okay and so i played like two hours of it and i'm like i'm gonna switch on the easy mode and uh, that's why i've been playing it on the easy mode since then and now i'm like four levels past where I was. But I feel like fun. that always happens mm-hmm. with indie games because the testers get so good mm-hmm. that they like don't realize who they're tuning the the leveling to and then they're like everyone's bad at our game because they haven't played it for four years. 
yeah that i remember that happened when jet lancer came out there was one level that everybody was like this is way too hard and they had to like patch the difficulty on one specific level so that you could actually finish it there's just posers people can't that's how i finished i know i felt like a poser (laughs) you Um, idiot you're the the lower after the after the patch um, I did beat Hyperlight Drifter. They did a difficulty patch after Hyperlight Drifter came out, but I beat it before the patch. So, oh, I, I thought you hadn't played that game. I'm glad you finally got around to it. Yeah, it's like this. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's like a like pixel art kind of thing, and and there's a guy, and, it's and there's hard a drifter. To tell what's happening with Hyperlight Ian Gibson. Would you like Hi. to talk about what you, Jake? That's everything, right? Yeah. I, got okay. I wasn't sure if that top spot was you being like, oh, it's a secret. Oh, uh, no, I didn't mean to do that. That's an accident. Ian, tell me all about Splatoon 3. Splatoon 3. Um, I played a little bit of Splatoon 3. I was very happy when it came out. I, I was a big fan of Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2. Splatoon 3, uh, good and bad, it's more of the same. Uh, I, I don't think they did quite enough to warrant... Honestly, I'm not sure they did enough to warrant Splatoon 2, and it's kind of the same story with Splatoon 3. Um, but that being said, it's the best version of Splatoon. So if you if you love that game, you can totally play it. I actually dropped off after about 90 minutes, and I'll tell you why. It's because... <laughs> tell us why. No, it's because I wasn't... I, I enjoyed Splatoon 1 and 2. I didn't play it a whole lot because it felt like I was bad at the game. And then Splatoon 3, I got about 90 minutes into it. I made sure to turn the gyro controls off, so I was doing the dual stick gaming. And I was like, you know what? It's not me, it's the game. Like, the controls are just not that good. Like, there's something about it where it's not quite hitting the standard of, like, third person. The workman blames his tool. (laughs) But it's like, it's like, it's not quite hitting the standard of, like, third person shooter controls. Like, it 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 just doesn't quite feel good. It almost feels a little bit laggy. Like you, you're never quite getting to where you want to aim quickly. And then the other problem is it's all about painting. So it's not like aim at this guy, shoot, aim at this guy, shoot. You end up just being like, so you're kind of just like constantly just everywhere. And that gets very tiresome and boring after a while. Like, I feel like this game would be great on mouse and keyboard. You know, because at that point, it's like power wash simulator. You know, you're just like, whoosh, whoosh, you know, because you're constantly painting the ground and the territory around you. And so you want to be able to just like quickly wipe, wipe aim. But that doesn't feel as good on a controller. So it's nothing against Splatoon. I just think that that game's not for me. I've never been a fan of controller shooter controls. And then you add a level of painting on top of it, uh, which is a shame. Uh, because I, I did enjoy one and two. There's a lot of creativity. There's a great game under there. It's just, I think I've hit my, I think I'm splatted out. Halucha, there's like six seconds of that, maybe like 25 seconds ago that need to be clipped completely out of context. <laughs> yeah, if you okay, can do I'll that. Take it. I'm sure you'll find it. <laughs> yeah. So the other game I've been playing that I played uh, probably about seven hours last weekend at least is assassin's creed odyssey like this is just the perfect seven like it really is it's just like this is a game it's got just enough it's got just enough to keep you going this is a popcorn title none of it is done incredibly well but all of it's done good enough and there's enough variety here for you to have some fun i'm really enjoying the ship combat like just every time they're like hey take your ship like two kilometers over there and i'm like great it takes me 50 minutes to get there because i'm attacking every fucking ship i see because i'm having <laughs> those, so those, much fun those with big it. greek boats with the pointy front ends. yes yeah and you're ramming too so you get like extra loot if you kill the boat by ramming it at the end so nice. I'm, I'm actually super fucking hyped for skull and bones like if it's even a half that it's it's gonna be a lot of fun um it's funny though i think i've kind of fallen off the game i can't tell because basically i went back to work on monday and i just i'm just slammed and like it's been a busy week, so I basically just I log off work at like six or seven p.m. and then I go read Harry Potter for two hours and then I fall asleep pretty much. <laughs> um, Have you finished? Uh, what, what did you say? You were on Goblet of Fire. I just I just finished Goblet of Fire. I got to take a break to read some other books, but uh, I'm I'm not ashamed to admit it. 
Uh, I hate that woman, but she's a good writer. I was fucking crying when Cedric died. I knew he was going to die, but I was still like, spoiler. Yeah, sorry. The audio listeners Jesus. who haven't I'm sorry, read these I'm sorry. books from Rewind that. 15 I was years crying ago. when Robert Pattinson died. I was just like, <laughs> no. <laughs> Is that it's actually very intense. It's like, Jesus. That's... That scene in the movie is also well. It's like the first meaningful character death in the whole yeah. series. It is, and and it's like it's like such a it's like a moment when everything gets serious, not just in terms of the story, but in terms of like stakes and Again, like Gary just, Oldman character. Yeah, who does Gary Oldman play? Does he not play Serious Black? He does play Serious Black. That's Gary. I was trying to remember who played him, yeah. and I oh, that's funny. Okay. Uh, yeah, my plan is to read through the series and get back to it. Anyways, anyways, uh, so I haven't played it since last weekend, but there was one thing that kind of skipped me a bit, which makes me think I'm not, I may be done with the game, which is, it's very weird. Like the first 10 hours, they're like, here's the story, right? You know, like, hey, you owe money. Go to this guy. Do that. Do that. And there's a whole bunch of side quests for you to do, but there's a very clear story through line and i was like this story's kind of interesting you know it's like this weird family drama but i'm kind of into it but I, I i'm ready for this game to open up right and then they open the game up and they're like look here's literally a chart of all these people you need to go assassinate and like some of them at the fringes you know who they are the other ones you have to find more information for and i was like hell yeah i'm about to go rip these people up all over greece and i go kill like four of them and it was so dull because all of them, all, the four I went after, they're each just in a compound, like like an Ubisoft Far Cry compound. And the compounds are a bit cookie cutter. So it's literally just sail here. There's a compound. Take out just enough guards to sneak in and kill the guy or just snipe him from a distance or just go in guns blazing. I'm sorry, swords blazing and take him out and then just leave. And I did like four of them and they're all basically the same. So it's, it's like the story missions that I wasn't, that were not incredibly well done, but they were at least enthralling and different enough and had story to them. They're now replaced by here's a flow chart of people, a hierarchy that you need to, to wipe out. And it's just like three or four of the same. So it's this moment where the game opened up like I wanted it to, but there's not enough variety in the open world. And now I'm like, ah, uh, fuck, maybe I'm off. So I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Is I've never played Assassin's Creed, but I have played Hitman, and so I feel like I don't need to play Assassin's Creed because everybody it is, talks about it. Yeah. Like, it sounds like just watered down historical Hitman. It's just popcorn. It's it's like I played Assassin's Creed Origins right after the pandemic started, and it was really just like I need something to burn some time at home. So I'm just gonna play like 25 hours of this game over the next week, which is just like I'm just gonna sit down. Like, like I, I traveled last week. I got back. Yeah, again, apologies for no local chat last week. I was out of town. I got back late. I was like, I took a red eye from the West Coast, basically like Friday night, Thursday night into Friday morning. So I got like, like a 90 minutes of sleep on Thursday. And I needed wow. the whole weekend to recover. And my recover was just like sit on the couch and play this game for four hours straight. Yeah. Next time you're in San Diego, you got to go to the zoo. Uh, That's I've been the there. reason to go to San Diego and see Halucha at the zoo. At the um, zoo, I uh, I was gonna say Jake as mm. someone you've never played any Assassin's Creed, no. Um, maybe I'll, I'll give it to you real good. Uh, maybe I'll let you. What console did you buy? Most recently, yeah, yeah, the yeah, the, the mini, the white rectangle. Uh, so never mind. I was gonna give you a disc. I have the first three. Sorry. Uh, but he's, he's, he remastered. has Origins and Odyssey now on Game Pass. I know. I don't give a flying I have fuck a about that. Too. Odyssey, Those games you made like are Origins. Trash. Origins. I, think, Origins I was going to tell Jake that... Oh, and the GameCube, so I'll bring the GameCube copy. Yes. Assassin's Creed 1 and 2, and I never played Brotherhood of Revelations, but 1 and 2 have some fantastic story beats. And I've like, heard that Black Flag is gameplay. good. Is that 4? Yeah. Eh. So I never played three. Black Flag's probably still my favorite. I had the ship stuff in that game is so good. Uh and just the map's great. The story's great because you're not the story has nothing to do with Assassin's Creed. You are a pirate who found a dead assassin. Like that is the you have no connection 
to Assassin's Creed. Oh, I've and seen the, the trailer the, for the movie. The outside story of Black Flag is also awesome, which is that you are using this technology to relive past DNA mm-hmm. as research to make a pirate video game. Nice. Yeah. That's the other cool yeah. thing about Black Flag. Um, but I would, uh, I only say try one, two, Matrix or Black Flag because origins and odyssey are different games like it fundamentally they're assassin's creed games but they're more rpg all this sort of stuff um so but i, feel I, I like really like one um having heard everybody talk about them i'm gonna play them and just want to be playing hitman it depends i or mean it, it, it does scratch a different itch it's a, it's a slightly itch. different itch there's a little bit of overlap and the, and where the overlap is hitman does it better but it's a slightly different itch mm, I, for yeah. me personally I would almost say wait a bit because the next Assassin's Creed feels like basically a remake or reboot of one, but with all where it's not just one, it's it's going to be next gen. It's going to be telling all the better stories. It's going to have the more gameplay to it, but still yeah. be paired back a bit. Yeah, there's but there's think- plenty of different ways to, to jump into the series. Yeah. Mm. And there's really I don't want to say there's no bad point, but they're all pretty much level in terms of right. they're all seven and eight. So you're, you're pretty much going to get the same experience across all of them. Okay. Yeah. Start with one. There you go. Um, last game I've been playing. Look, I've been playing this for like three, four weeks now, but again, we haven't been recording local chat because I've been traveling a lot. I've been playing hold fast nations at war. Have you guys heard of this game? No, it sounds like yes. an RTS. Will describe this game to me. This game I know from a TikTok that I sent to the chat a long time ago, which is two men dressed in, I believe, Napoleonic regalia are walking in a battlefield. And one says, hey, what what are you going to do after the war? And he goes, I can't wait to see my wife. And then a cannon goes off and the cannonball absolutely destroys him. Uh, I love and it. then yeah. it's in TikTok style, it is very funny. Um, so I think it's a puzzle game where you raise chickens. You know, if, if we weren't running late, I'd give you another shot at that one, but we're just going to go full steam ahead here. Yeah. Basically this is a, it's, it's, it's kind of weird. It's like a first and third person shooter. Um, it's all multiplayer. It's all match based almost in like an archaic multiplayer format where it's like, a little bit like Battlefield, where it's like, hey, you're on a map. There's three capture points. Capture them, and after 10 minutes, whoever has the most tickets or points or whatever wins. Um, that kind of archaic multiplayer format. But it's it's Napoleonic, so you've got muskets and stuff, you know? <laughs> and there's, like, melee. And and it's, it's weird because the controls don't feel that good, but there's just enough, like, personality here, and the server sizes go up to, I believe, 140 people. Dang. So you join any server and it's just like it's just like a melee and people love to role play in this like not to an extreme amount but they will they'll they'll be running around being like get the british get the bloody british i see them they're just like screaming over voice chat and and there's like there's really cool mechanics in it like i i wasn't doing too well with it because it's hard to aim not just because you're inaccurate but but also because there's like a shitload of bullet drop like like literally they tell you don't aim with the center of the crosshair aim with the bottom of the crosshair (laughs) and that that'll be closer than using the center um but I found my niche, which is I like to be the flag bearer. So what, so I, I hold the flag in battle. And, and when I'm around people, they reload 10% faster. Mm. Um, and then I, you have this skill where you can put the flag on your left shoulder and hold a pistol with the other one. So I just like walk around in this in like groups of people like shooting with the pistol, which is pretty inaccurate, but it's good at close range. And then every now and then, like I'm not on voice chat but other people are on voice chat and some of the officers will be like, charge! And I'll just rush out with the flag and everybody's like following me as the flag bearer because you can see me more than other people. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's one of those games where it's like, they're not doing anything crazy good and honestly, some of the mechanics suck and don't feel that well. But because the community like embraces it so much it becomes a lot of fun i haven't tried any of the line battles there there's a whole bunch of discord communities and they call them regiments which are basically their idea of clans and they're kind of built into the game to an extent and they host line battles all the time so normally it's just a brawl right you're just running around you're shooting people like line um, dancing but like literally the line battles are like hey 
uh, you're going to have an officer. You have to be in line and you have to follow our like first line load muskets. And like, you have to follow that or you're going to get kicked from the server. And I definitely want to try that at some point because it sounds like it could be a lot of fun if everybody on the server is literally doing line battles. Um, <laughs> so it's it's just one of those niche games that's just like scratching, <clears throat> scratching the right way. You know what I mean? It, it's it's pretty neat. Speaking of okay. line battles. I had completely forgotten that Roland Emmerich directed The Patriot. That's a good movie. Starring... That may be his best. Well, it might Independence be. Day is pretty good. Wait, didn't he do Total Recall? No, that's Paul Verhoeven. Oh, that is Paul Verhoeven. Are you, are you talking about... What am I thinking? He didn't even do the new one. No. No. Who's... What? I gotta look it up. I think it of Universal um, I was gonna say... Uh, line battle to me sounds like a Mario Party video game where you're trying to do Ooh, as many yeah. lines of cocaine as you can. Oh, my oh God. no! <laughs> but like the line starts squiggling, so you have to yeah, like so keep like... up with the line. <laughs> that's using a the microphone game. to blow into it. No, that's like that's like a like a WarioWare mini. Game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Um, the other thing I was gonna say is that does sound like a lot of fun, and I should have bought it when it was on sale. Um, yeah, so I will. The it's, next time it's, on sale. it's cool. It's cool. They do have oh, a World War One mode. It doesn't. It doesn't work quite as well. Actually, a lot of people don't play it because the shooting's too fast now because of bolt actions. <laughs> but um, but it it's still it's still a very fun game to play. Uh, I was I was thinking of Stargate was what he directed, and also yes. the day yeah. after tomorrow, which is uh, one of my and favorite. Twenty twelve and movies. Moonfall and Midway. Um, I was Midway? on board for Moon. Midway wasn't that bad, honestly. Was it not that bad? I it wasn't. It was, I was, found it preposterously stupid in unforgivable ways. I couldn't have fun with it oh, as much really? as I wanted to. I, I was surprised at how much it was trying to tell the the real story. And I appreciated that. Yeah, it was there's the when they like reveal what the plot actually is, I was like, Okay, all right, I'm I'm with it. But it was like yeah. that nugget of a story I was with and everything else I was not with. Wait, there's a yeah. different plot in it? You just got to watch it. The, the, like the character stories aren't that good, but like it, it tells the story of Midway as it happened in history, which was pretty. Oh, cool. so I'm still talking about Moonfall. Oh, you <laughs> idiot. I'm talking about Midway. Sorry. Midway is good. <laughs> yes, it tells the true story of how Moonfall <laughs> happened. <laughs> I need to watch Moonfall. Midway. Man. Mo- Midway was, it's not amazing, but it was like, oh shit, he made a decent movie. Mm. Like he restrained himself enough. I've seen the National and, and, Geographic documentary. Yeah, but and, it, and the story of Midway is really good because there's really good beats in it, and like like there's Admiral Nimitz in it, and you're just mm-hmm. like, oh, that's Nimitz that's class. why that guy is has his name everywhere mm-hmm. <laughs> because of this. Yeah, aircraft carrier baby. Um, I uh, y'all y'all ever read Seven Eves? Yeah, no. I I yeah. like the like moon stuff. I liked yeah. two portions of that book but not the entire book. But um, yeah, that just when Moonfall first premiered, I was like, oh, that's like seven Eves. But uh, Moonfall looks cool. stupid enough that I want to watch it. Sorry. So really yeah, watch it. I realize how my comments sounded talking about Midway. <laughs> Moonfall was preposterously just, stupid in ways I that I couldn't I like forget. the story of Midway. I feel like no, the no, other no. guy should have won, <laughs> you know? But also the Moonfall I was on board with until like they revealed the thing in one of the trailers and I was like I am no longer on board with this. So, yeah, I haven't watched this yet. I have uh, it's sitting on my Plex server so I'll, I'll watch it at some point. It's on HBO um, Max. It is on HBO Max. That's how I watch oh, it. Oh, so I will delete it off my Plex server. <laughs> it does not deserve that room. No, I'm trying I'm trying to save you but you're just like no, I did pirate it, but now I can delete the pirated copy. Well, I need more room for more of my Paramount Plus shows. <laughs> <laughs> All that new Star Trek content. Oh my god. Oh, that's my favorite interaction ever. Uh, folks, uh, it's time for the news, I think. So let's get to it. Hit the news button. Here's we the have time news. for two stories. It's gaming news. We're talking about news. What's up, news? But now there's more to the song so you can sing along and it won't bore you, though. Unlike Factorio. On the switch. Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. But we don't want to have a vocal spat, so let's bring it back to your local chat. He should have rhymed that this is your local Zach. That would have been mm. pretty good if he had done Next that. Next time. Um, Just first have bit him of news. record it again. 
First bit of news, folks. Uh, my Steam Deck is purchased, and it will be shipping soon. I'm very excited. I, look, I'm just going to say this. I hope you hate it. I hope I hate it, too. <laughs> it's just uh, a fancy Game Gear. Well, if I only spend two hours on it, I can return it. <laughs> How much is a Game Gear? Probably a you lot. Think, you think they I mean, have one? I have, like, goodwill. four of them in a box at my parents, if you would like one. Are you serious? One for yeah. each subpixel. Yeah, give me. Boy. I want a Game Gear. I've seen one. I've seen it in person once, and I was like, "That's I, so big, it's stupid." I have I no idea it. if they work, but I bought like a lot from someone, and they were like, "I think there's like six of them." Bring them to Wait Extra Life for Life, and we'll I'm fix them at one. on stream. I'm looking at one on Shop Goodwill. It ends in 42 minutes, and the current bidding is twenty three dollars. Ooh, I did Seems not reasonable. win that GameCube. I was very upset. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. I didn't need it. Anyways. Um, time for the, the news. news. There was a massive GTA 6 leak yeah, over the weekend. I believe it was wow. Sunday. Um, the leakers supposedly got in through their work slack. Um, Oof. And the same way they got in through Uber, I guess. And uh, boy, they found 90 videos and screenshots First of all, let's get it out of the way. This game looks like shit, and we all know the art gets done first. So this game's going to look, look like shit. I, I sorry, you get done with the spiel, and then I'll talk about this whole controversy and pushback, because um, it's it smells fishy to me. But uh, it's, yeah, Rockstar is investigating it. I believe the FBI is in on it now because of the, mul I don't know if the fbi would be involved but since it's the same person as the uber attack and i think they did something else recently too uh um, take two they well, killed the queen two, i don't know if take two was the same person but they take two got hit recently i thought there was something else minor but anyways um so yeah everything's been taken down now so if you're trying to go find it i mean you can find it but you can find most it. of it's gone um very strict policies at work of not posting any of the images i had an idea of uh using dolly to fake yes. images <laughs> but then we came to the conclusion that if those images are out there dolly might actually use them to create yeah the new images so we're like ah, eh, let's not do it um anyways what were you going to say ian gibson yeah so it's it's kind of i mean first of all this is real shitty for somebody to do um you know i understand there's frustration with the company etc but don't it's highly illegal and also you know Give the artists some credit and let them work and reveal their creation on their own uh, pace. Um, but it's kind of weird. There's like, you know, the whole trend going around on Twitter of people being like, uh, don't complain about how this game looks like. It, you know, this is what my game looked like in the first year. And like I was following this leak pretty closely when it broke over the weekend and like diving into like the GTA forum threads where it, where it first came out and, and the 4chan threads and Twitter, etc., there really wasn't that much negative vitriol around this game. Like there's been this, this narrative constructed about how the GTA six leak has led to all these fans saying they don't want the game because it looks ugly. But I think I saw that post maybe twice looking through the entire thing. It, a it lot doesn't of that, feel like it happened. A lot of that stuff on Twitter spun out from one yeah. response to like a Kotaku yeah, article or response. something. Yeah. Yeah. That then all the, all the devs who actually knew something about game development were able to be like, nah, bro, yeah. listen yeah. here. Yeah. I don't think anyone thought that I'm just commenting. It's funny that that one guy said that and then everyone dogpiled on it would be like, you're an yeah. idiot. So I agree. But, I, but, but, I, but I, I think, I, th I think it, part of it was you're an idiot, but part of it was also like, gamers are so entitled to think like this and it was like no don't put me in that fucking camp like 99 percent of the people seeing this leak were fucking hyped they were like oh yeah. it's fucking vice city like uh, i'm okay with the female protagonist granted they were only saying that because she's got a badonka donk on her and they're like <laughs> wait she's hot i guess i'm okay with that now like uh, there's uh, they were digging through some of the like the code leaks and snippets and it was like all sorts of like expanded like uh interactions like store robberies etc that are expanded just all these different little mechanics that are really fleshed out from gta 5 like this wasn't granted i don't appreciate the situation that happened but there was an overwhelmingly positive response to this and i, I just got to step out there and say i don't appreciate the games industry or or games media trying to present this as like entitled gamers shit talking about the game because of what came on the leak that's not what happened don't try and pick some shitty minority but and act like they clicks. represent all of us that yeah fuck those click people, fuck that 
Yeah. Yeah. It also integrity. looked pretty good too. Um, with the yeah. other thing. <laughs> yeah. I didn't look at anything, but more because it was starting to fizzle by the time that I was even able to start peeking at stuff. But I was like, I don't, I don't need to see it. Um, I'll see yeah. it when it's ready. Yeah, I saw uh, one it's definitely one of those things. I, I mean, I watched a decent amount of it, but honestly, it was like it's too early to get excited and none of it yeah. is hype real. And and the other thing is like a lot of it was running at like 15 to 20 frames per second because they're like, we're not focusing on performance yet. We got a whole shitload of debug menus open. So it, it was really better just to come back later and read the synopsis of like the people who dug through the footage and were like, yo, here's something new they did. Here's something different. Here's something crazy. You know, the setting, the stories, the characters, mechanics, et cetera, stuff like mm. that. So it it wasn't that crazy to look at it, but to to hear the information coming out of it. I'm very excited for this game. How, what percentage of stuff that was leaked do you think is going to get cut by the time final release rolls around? Zero percent. Zero? Yeah, because honestly, a lot of it, you know, coming from coming from software QA and, and games QA, uh, a lot of it looked like it was somebody with a debug menu open and they're mm. dicking around like they're literally like, OK, trigger this interaction. OK, now shoot from it. Does it look good? OK, try it a couple times. Try it a couple times. Not necessarily testing, but like playing with it. So it wasn't like, oh, here's a full blown. It was cutscene. well past like blockout stuff. No, it, it was more like it was more like. Uh, here's a restaurant. I'm going to walk into this restaurant and try and do a robbery. It's not a oh, story okay. scene. I am, I'm dicking around with the mechanics. Yeah, I'm making really. sure I can, I'm making sure I can lean out of this car and the animation looks okay while I'm shooting. I'm making sure that when I take this car off a ramp that the physics behave properly. It was stuff. And like also that. it was, it was, this stuff was taken from Slack files. So I feel like a lot of that stuff would be like, Hey, check out this thing I just tested or check out right. this cool yeah. thing that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that we're working on. So like, yeah, yeah, some the, of it, the, I, I could see, like, smaller videos being like, hey, what if we did this, and then someone being no, but I think, like, yeah. the longer form stuff was to show off mm -hmm. stuff yeah. that's going to be in there. And and the story stuff was was really just, like, these are the two main characters, this is roughly what they are. So so I, I don't think they, they're going to cut any of it, because if they cut it, then they would have to rework a majority of the mechanics right. in the game. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, wild stuff, uh, I hope... I hope we get word from them soon uh, of the game which, on their own time, but also I'm I'm interested to follow the, the uh, investigation, legal legal proceedings, the, that sort of stuff. Um, it'll be interesting yeah. to, to follow it. I I I want to like a year or six months from now, I want to read some huge synopsis of what actually went down because there's just so much stuff in the ether. Like there was a rumor that uh the leakers sold the gta 5 source code for a hundred thousand dollars but it and wasn't the, rumor... the actual well no but, th but then the then the rumor changed to no somebody bought it but it wasn't the it wasn't the leaker that sold yeah, it, it like somebody, somebody, posing somebody leaker. else i don't know if any of that ever ended up being true because there was just so much going on so quickly this weekend so i want to come back later and read the synopsis and be like T tell me the real story behind this tell me what actually happened yeah go to the uh go to the wiki and read it all up uh, next up here, Sony is to launch uh, a new PlayStation 5 with a detachable disk drive. Sources say this from uh, Insider Gaming, new website from... Uh, I can't think of his name right now. So uh, this is... There's the two. There's one version with a disk drive and one version without, but now they're just launching one where you can like USB attach it. What's the deal here? I think the, I think the main thing is you can buy... A, a disk drive separately that would be that was my question yes. like if i had a ps5 that didn't have the disk drive can i just buy the disk drive i think so 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 the one uh, thing this story didn't make clear was it's kind of talking about two things it's talking about a new SKU of the playstation mm -hmm. 5 that would replace the digital only one that's there now which they've they've actually already had several revisions of the hardware already but they were all kind yeah, of i've seen relatively minor tweaks nothing that really affects the end user um but along with that, they would sell it with and without a detachable drive. The one thing that I, I didn't find in the article is, does that mean that detachable drive is only working on that new console? Or would it work on PlayStation 5 digital only that, that have already been sold? I'm mm -hmm. hoping ones that have already been sold. I, I Part of me is like, this is a stupid idea. But then I thought about it and I'm like... Detachable drives, they're dirt cheap. Like if if you could if you could make a ten dollar detachable drive and sell it to suckers for fifty bucks because they bought the wrong console, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. why not? 
I wonder, is this a part of them acknowledging, like, maybe their projections were wrong and physical media wasn't dipping as big as they thought? Or, like, the well, used games scenario? I'll say, I bought, when I bought my PS4, it was half to play games and half so that I could have something that played Blu-rays. Um, and so when PS5 came out, I was like, oh, maybe now I can have something that plays 4K Blu-rays. Um, yeah. But the yeah. disc, the discless version was so much cheaper. I still haven't pulled the trigger on a PS5 and probably won't for a while. Um, but yeah, if it, if I could have a way to play, you know, 4K Blu-rays, yeah, for I, a reasonable I use, price. I use my PS5 for the 4K Blu-rays only because the disc drive is quieter than the Xboxes. Um, yeah. But I, I, that's kind of I don't know if there was an update or my disc drive just like fixed itself. But my Xbox disc drive isn't as loud with with blu-rays anymore but i still i prefer the interface of the playstation for uh for movies like their uh movie interface not their ui <laughs> interface um yeah so there that's where i watch 4k blu-rays uh this is interesting i'll buy one uh when they're at a goodwill in like 30 years be like oh look a ps5 detachable disk drive <laughs> an hd rom wow I'm like ian you want this uh, i might get it i think i'll probably get it yeah. are you still filming you want to film me outside with this for pixel yeah. 8 yeah let's do it <laughs> okay that's cool. that's basically how it goes yeah that's gonna happen uh and then yeah then we return it <laughs> that's how we do all our <laughs> pixel 8 We'll just buy the Tesla. Uh, Marvel Whoa. Entertainment and EA Motive are teaming up for an all-new Iron Man game. Okay. In the latest announce your game early to get people to work on it scheme. Actually, I think it's a good idea. Uh, from Electronic Arts, they are working on a Iron Man video game. Unfortunately, not the really cool one that Avalanche was working on that was shown off two months ago, a month ago. What? Um, Oh, you mean when it was revealed that they were working on one in like 2012 or 2014? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It's like that recently was cool. Avalanche was working no, on no, an no. Iron Man game. It was like a. It? I think they were gonna pitch it or something. Uh, no, this is no, no, no. They they worked on an Iron Man game for a year, and then Disney came back. Disney Marvel came back and like gave them an aggressive timeline, and they basically said, in order to make oh, this timeline, cool. we have to like hire a shitload of people and ruin our whole studio culture just mm. to make this game, and then fire them. So they ended up just passing on the project because it, it wasn't a good fit for them. Hmm. Thank you, Ian, for having the memory of an elephant. Um, Hi. I don't know. I, I don't really care about this, but it's clearly on here for a reason. It, this is I think this is big news because, number one, Marvel games have been in a little bit of a weird state recently. Uh, not quite as bad as Disney Star Wars games, but it feels like Disney Marvel games haven't quite been there. And so this is them branching out a bit. You know, Spider-Man, of course, big success and Miles Morales. Uh, Avengers, what a garbage fire of a game. Um, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of excited Galaxy. for this. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. So so they are actually taking some risks here, spreading it around and getting some good games out of this. Um, I think the other thing is that Motive Studio is mostly known for Battlefield, sorry, Battlefront and Battlefront 2 which uh they're not terrible games they're not they really for good. me yeah that's the other thing pretty they look they look really good battlefront 2 i wasn't crazy about the campaign but they're very pretty and they yeah. play well so honestly i think that type of studio with what they've done so far going more towards more of a single player experience versus trying to keep making multiplayer shooters i think this is a good fit for them like iron man man Iron Man's fucking cool, right? Like, if you told me, if you gave me a 7 out of 10 Iron Man game, I still have a fucking hell of a time playing it. Flying around, shooting goobers, hovering and all that shit. Hell yeah, you know? Like, this is a, this yeah. is a, this is an incredible <laughs> video game that just needs to be made. And so this seems like a good step. Mm. Fuck yeah. Do it. Uh, yeah, I guess that is kind of exciting. I don't know. It's like so far away. I can't really get it up for a game that's going to be out here in like 10 years. <sighs> Next. Chris Pratt. He's here. He's ready to debut his voice at the New York Comic Con. There's going to be a Super Mario Bros. movie teaser trailer at New York Comic Con. I am placing a bet on FanDuel Sports hashtag ad <laughs> with, my triple, with my triple winner points 
that Chris Pratt's voice will not be in this teaser trailer. How could they do that? Really? You think it's just going to be be, like action shots? It's going to be Charlie Day and Seth Seth Rogen and... uh, So, I think it'll be everyone. It'll be some shot. And then... And then they reveal Mario at the end. And then they reveal Mario at the end. He just looks at the camera or something. So there's that. Or there's all the action shots. It zooms up to Mario, a la Believe Halo ad. Uh, (laughs) And it goes to Mario... He like turns face the camera. The camera goes black, and you just hear, "It's a me, Mario." See, and that's what says going like on. or spring twenty twenty three. Yeah, wahoo! Uh, it'll be Charles Martinet, and they'll be like, "We actually hung Chris Pratt. <laughs> oh, we back. shot Chris Pratt <laughs> in the parking lot. And we got what Charles Martinet." I, we got to go around the horn here. I want to hear your. I want to hear your best guess of what Chris Pratt's Mario voice is. And um, what, what should we what should we say? Uh, it's it's me, Mario. Be, I think or it's where's just the be his voice. Like you think of the other like voice yeah. actor roles that he's done. It's just him. No, but I need to hear it. So, for example, I think it's going to be where's the princess. I don't know if he's even going to uh, well, have that well, much of an effect. Take. Give me your take. Um, you got to say where's the princess. Just where's the princess? I think it's where's just going to be princess. Straight Chris Pratt. <laughs> it's gonna do a falsetto. Yeah. I wish. Where's the princess? All right, Jake. Jake, give it. Give us. I did it. No. Where's the princess? You think he's gonna go? He's gonna go Seal Team Six, gruff? <laughs> no. Like he got but... confused on which movie he's in. Yes, I think he's gonna have princess. <laughs> no, it's just gonna be. It's just gonna be him. Jesus Christ! It's Jake's born. Not gonna do like an Italian accent. He is God, not you know doing an I... Italian accent. I guarantee he is not. Well, I think he said he's not doing an Italian accent in interviews previously. Yeah. I think he's he recently said it. Though. One way or the I, other, uh, we're all going to take know. a massive amount of psychic damage when this trailer drops. <laughs> well, I was just about to say, look, I'm not excited for this movie at all because it has very little chance of being good or even just like interesting, except, except if they give him a gun and they make it Mario plus Rabbids movie. Oh. And it's just, it's Luigi as the sniper. And then you got Chris Pratt doing the gruff voice. Come I on. Just, give there's Mario so a gun, many... Luigi's an alcoholic. About yes. the only person that, like, the two people I can actually picture in their roles are Anya Taylor-Joy and Charlie Day. Like, I cannot imagine Jack Black's voice coming out of Bowser. I cannot imagine it, Seth Rogen's a... voice coming Seth out of Rogen. Donkey Kong. I was a Joe uh, Rogan. <laughs> I just with Joe Rogan as Donkey Kong. I th- I think for me it's like a combination. It's it's like the way that it's been presented is not crazy enough to work, but it's also not stupid enough to be good bad. It's, it's just, just gonna be like whoosh, right, right the in the middle of the road of just like what is going on here. Do you do you think there's a Sonic contingency plan that the trailer to, comes out and there's so much vitriol for Chris Pratt they to just, hire a new actor? No, to remake the movie. Because they did just pick up an animation studio to start doing more Nintendo. But do you properties. think if people hated Chris Pratt's voice enough, they would just swap in Martin? Hay? No, this is no, such Chris a Pratt. sunk cost for them. Yeah, and Chris Pratt, regardless of what the gamers will say, is he's still a big box office draw. Yeah, yeah. he's number one on the call sheet. Yeah. I'm, not pay- I'm not. I'm not. Moms taking their kids to see this movie do not care who the voice of Mario Excuse is. Excuse me, Will. You are going to see this movie in theaters. We're going to go see it opening day. Pixel 8, yeah, opening day of the Mario And we're going to do a video on it or something. Like, uh, this is not a joke. We have can to we, go see this can movie. We, can we do the video, but in the in the style of, like, the 40s? And all the stars are here. Boom, 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 boom. Like, we're at the red carpet. Can we do it like that? I'm sorry. Again, we're running late, so I can't give you another take on that one. We're just going to have to press ahead. Where's the princess? Where are the other drugs going? Um, I'll tie it. This next one, uh, a YouTuber has launched an indie publisher, uh, Video Game Donkey, a person surprisingly I am not familiar with, has... uh, Claimed that 11 years of reviewing games on YouTube has given him the skills he needs to know which games are going places and which games are going to the trash, which is a fantastic. It was a, from yeah, I first. watched I watched the 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 press video and it's a lot of dubious 
uh, <laughs> statements, but I can appreciate what he's trying to do. Uh, he and yeah. his wife are using all their YouTube and Twitch money to seemingly acquire and publish indie games, which seems admirable, but we'll see how it happens in practice. I, um, I'm not sure how to feel about this because like when he first got announced, there was the initial backlash of like YouTuber thinks they can do everything better than mm -hmm. games industry veterans. And I was like, yeah, you tell him, you know, he doesn't realize how hard it is to make games, how hard software is. Yeah, you tell him. And then Danny O'Dwyer had a very good tweet today, which he's just like, oh, no, he didn't do the usual route of like going to Harvard Business School, like getting into C-suites via nepotism, like continuously getting moved to side companies because they're doing a bad job until eventually they get like up they get like what's it called like up fired where instead of mm -hmm. getting fired you just get up promoted into a higher yeah. position at some other company and all of a sudden you're a video game publisher like you're running a video game publisher and i was like oh fuck that's a really good point like there are a shitload of people at video game publishers etc that don't know games they just don't mm -hmm. and they don't they don't play games like there were several co-workers when i was in the games industry who were like the only game i play is uh kingdom hearts and i played that five years ago and it's just like how the fuck are you in this industry then if you have no passion for the thing you're working on so part of me is like this is a lot of hubris but the other part of me is like you know this industry probably does need some more people who actually sit down and play games yeah. religiously mm -hmm. etc yeah like I, mean, I think it would have helped perhaps bringing in an outside marketing consultant on that yes. launch video. Yes. Um, but I, I like, I was not religiously familiar with donkey's content, but um, he certainly seems like he's, you know, passionate about games and yeah. the, the playing and the distributing of them. So I hope it goes well. Speaking of voices that I don't like to listen to, um, I didn't think his, uh, like, I, I agree with you, Ian. I think it's admirable to do this sort of thing. I hope it works out. I think it's going to be a great idea if it does work out. But I agree. It was the way he went about announcing it, saying, like, yes. I discovered Enter the Gungeon and Celeste and Hollow Knight, and that's the reason you know about it, which is yeah. not true. But I am glad that I personally was there for Stardew Valley, so everyone knew what that was, and RimWorld, obviously. Um, but yeah, I, that, I think well, that's you're the reason takes people know about with. Dwarf Fortress. That's true. <clears throat> you know, you're joking, but we do have like 300,000 views on that video, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here's the 300,000 more, um, a game I don't play. <laughs> yeah. I, now that I'm thinking about it, he really shouldn't be a publisher. He just should be a patron. He should just be going around saying, I bless the game. Here's some money. Give me some of the cut on the back end. An angel and, investor. Uh, yeah, yeah angel investor exactly that's what that's what he should be because but the other thing is publisher part of being a publisher is yes like like mentoring picking the good games and guiding them through the process and providing feedback and making sure they're on the right path but a larger part of it is actually publishing the game and um, again i didn't watch his video but i don't there, from what i've heard there's no credentials that he's provided where he's like i've worked with sony and microsoft before i know all the standards you have to hit in order to get your game published i know what those business contracts look like that's the part of the publishing that i'm like you know what maybe you shouldn't call yourself a publisher yeah. call yourself an angel investor hmm. unless yeah he, unless they're really gonna they're gonna handle you you have the distribution and the uh the, i think that's what, what they're planning they their certification yeah they're starting their own their own publishing label well, so I'm... they're supposed to be handling that too I don't know if he realizes how much more a bad game you published will hurt your uh, influence yeah. of the gaming industry than a review someone might not agree with. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is, yeah. It's, it's, it, reviewing a game and calling it good or bad is different than endorsing a product. Um, yeah, so we'll see how it shakes out. Yeah. And staking a product. You know. As the great Sheev Palpatine once said, we will watch your career with great interest. Have you heard the Darth Plagueis? Um, here's the middling news that I'm going to read through very quickly. Logitech's G Cloud gaming handheld arrives in October for $350. That's $50 more That's than the many. Switch. And That's it stupid. doesn't... Yeah, it's stupid. That sucks. Star Citizen crowdfunding reaches five hundred million dollars after stupid. nearly a decade. That is stupid. I would like my money back. Former PlayStation boss Sean Layden joins Tencent and says, "I want that money, please." As the strategic That's smart. advisor. That's a pretty That's smart move. That's a smart move. 
Um, and then that's it. That's that's all the news. That's wait, it. I have to. Uh, wait, Can I Jake? go to bed now? No, no, no. Sorry, I was trying to plan. I was trying to. I, I'm sorry. I can't corroborate the story now. I was hoping to get the actual facts before I could. Um, I'll say it next week. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're not on it next week, bud. I'm kicking you off. Well, I'll add it to the list. <laughs> no, you can be on next week. I don't care. Um, I'm gonna hit this button, and that means we're ready to leave, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in Halucha, thanks for making it to the end Jake thank you for being here it's lovely to have you in a house where you, you, your microphone is close to your face at all times your internet seems to be pretty good Ian's was a little iffy during this um, oh really? yeah surprisingly uh, it wasn't <laughs> I'm on me, ethernet so you can't blame me and I did um, a, like, a really clean cable run all the way back to the modem like up over the door and it's real nice because I have a hundred feet of Ethernet cable. Oh my goodness, big boy! Uh, folks, you can catch all of our content subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you straight to our link tree where you can go to all the beautiful things like buying merch. Get some of our merch. We're selling like hotcakes. Get it before it sells out. I'm getting emails all day. Merch sold. Merch sold. Merch sold. Um, also, my Lego video came out today, so go watch that and make fun of the way I speak. Please. And then go watch all of okay. my Lego videos. And then go watch all of Jake's Lego. Videos. Um, it's like Saturday <laughs> at 6 p.m. Eastern, I will be on a uh, charity stream or something. They call it a charity stream, but they keep the money um, that's for not, safe that's data. Not. <laughs> I don't think they call it a charity stream. Uh, but uh, I'm going to be on their Jeopardy, so come check that out. And then at 8 p.m., hopefully... Jason will be joining me for Pokemon White, Poke Will White. If not, it'll be a very bored Ian Gibson uh, joining me, reading Harry Potter while we play the game. <laughs> Why don't you just do that? <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Ian. And we'll see you all next week.